have Hardcore Leveling Warrior by Kim Seon. So Ethan returns, and what does the author decide to do? He decides to focus on one character that could justify taking our attention away from the main character after like freaking 200 episodes or actually 80 episodes or so in season two, and that's by focusing on King Yopi. And I think that was a brilliant move by the author, and he bring the heat too. So there's a few things that I noticed about King Yopi that I, I think is worth focusing on. So I marked out six. One, one of the things we learned about King Yopi is that he uses cards to manifest his abilities. Two, that Giga actually killed his brother in the real world, and now he's here to kill them in Lucid Adventure. I'm not sure if Yopi knows how that transfers, if he knows that Lucid Adventure may have some connection to the real world, and by doing so, if he's just trying to destroy his empire, but I'm not completely sure how Yopi knows to kill him, Sam, and Lucid Adventure, how that's gonna affect him in the real world. Not completely sure about that. Three, the king has incredible speed. Four, he has enough defensive power. It's strong enough to survive an attack meant to melt dragon scales. Five, he's apparently the king's an intelligent being. He won, waited for the perfect time to attack Giga after Nightmare took down all their forces. And then two, he used Palace Boy's trap that was supposed to kill King Yopi and instead tracked Palace Boy and Sam and the rest of the Giga, uh, Giga crew back to where he was at. Five, and I'm just going to read it as it says, he nurtures monsters. That might be referring to the different guild members or it may be referring to something else, but maybe there's a deeper meaning than what we see on the surface. And then six... Uh, seven rather according to his guild he is stronger than anyone else uh, obviously except Ethan as of right now what I would describe as the climax of this episode is when they asked him he charges the Giga Gates where they are and um, they asked him why do you toy with the opponents because they see that he had this incredible power and he could have one shot and took them out and he said to them, because there was a kid who liked that about me, but you guys killed him. <laughs> That's when you knew it hit the fan that was about to get real. So apparently high ranking or seemingly high ranking player Sam and Giga apparently is connected to Yopi's brother's death. I don't know if he drove him to suicide through bullying, if he actually just had him outright murdered, if he caused him to lose his job. There's so many ways, you know, people can be connected for things. But um, I don't read the fast graph, so I won't ruin it. But I am definitely looking forward to that in two days. The God of High School, episode 500 by Yoji Park. She-Dragon says to Mori Jin that he must be the new guardian that Gaia chose. I'm wondering what Gaia chose Mori to defend. I'm pretty sure it was Gaia herself, except that Mori ate her. Maybe he was supposed to protect the planet instead, and that's why she encouraged him to do it, but I'm not 100% sure what she had in mind when she asked Mori to protect her. Now, Ryong, our she-dragon, and that's how I'm going to refer to her going forward, um, states that Mori was there to protect her. Maybe the real purpose for Mori was to protect the people from Maitreya. And, and Mubong Park and these other gods that came down. She Dragon stated that she was the height of all creation. My question would be from whose standpoint though? Was it Gaia's standpoint of her being the height of all creation? Because obviously when Maitreya and these groups came down, they, they, they put it down now she was betrayed and that kind of weakened her. But um I really have to, I really want to understand what was meant by her being the height of all creation. If that stating that she was created and therefore she is not a god, that would make sense why she would have lost to Maitreya and the others, and she's probably about to lose to Mori, who is said to be the god or ruler of heaven. That being said, 
even though Mori is a god, he also seems like he was created or reborn or something because she dragon said that she hatched him on her slash his back. Maybe that's a king reference while they refer to this her as a he. But um, Mori had to grow from her, but he still gave her nutrients. So it's it's interesting. Now, when Maitreya comes down and he attacks She-Dragon, he then announces that from now on, this is the holy place. Now, the word holy in a Christian sense means dedicated to righteousness. So I'm guessing Maitreya means to say that this is a place set apart for specific purposes and he is the holy, you know, for whatever purposes in the God of high school, um, the, the place is holy because it's set apart for his specific purposes. It's dedicated to whatever his idea of righteousness is, even though it's clearly evil. Right? Um, then they take a quote from the Bible about a thief coming in the night, and that's from Revelations, and Jesus talks about that in, in the book. But Maitreya is supposed to be this evil Jesus slash evil Buddha because they refer to him as Tathagata, and that's also another name for Buddha. So it's just interesting how the uh, author here uses all these other types and makes them to evil characters. Now, after Maitreya put She-Dragon down, the height of all creation didn't take it lightly, and she began to fight back and started calling back dragons, but, um, Again, she was betrayed by mankind. They bowed her to the floor and they made bones out of her Yui. Made Yui's out of her bones. And that sounded like it was pretty powerful. And when Mori Jin saw that she was a real deal, that she could block Mujin Park's power just by being there, automatically she wanted to, uh, he wanted to have her power. Meanwhile, Mujin Park summons Gaia and um, instead of being humble and asking for what he needs, he starts directing her and telling her what she's going to do after telling his servers that they're too slow. So who knows what's going to happen, whether Mubin Park is going to attack in the middle of their fight or whether the author is going to allow Mori to get away and do some more training. Who knows? It'll be interesting to see where the author goes with this.